unit overlooks the Mississippi River near the campus of the University of Minnesota. It is typical of 17 other hospitals in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Hawaii, with little children who are kept orthopedically and underprivileged, regardless of race, creed, or color. These hospitals, under the auspices of the ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine, their slogan is, if you can pay, you may not enter. The hospital as we see it today is is completely different. I mean, it's uh, the patients they were, you know, they, they like lived here. So a lot of the patients consider this their home. I talked to a boy just about two weeks ago. He was here with his son. He was a patient here when he was a youngster, and I treated him, and now he has his, his daughter here. And um, I asked him if he had any problem with his siblings when he went home, as far as them being quite jealous of him, parents coming up to visit, and so on, and he said no. He said one interesting thing was that it wasn't too long ago that they took the family home down, it was torn down, and his siblings felt very bad about that home being gone. He said it didn't bother him a bit, but he said when the old hospital went down, that really bothered him. <laughs> so it's what he was familiar with. He spent a lot of time here. In 1990, when our original building was torn down and the current one was built, they found a need for on-site housing for the families, which we call our Parent Accommodation Center. The Women's General Auxiliary not only funded it, they, they built it for us. So that consists of 10 hotel-type rooms. Um, it's about $40 a night for the families, and oftentimes the Shriners will pay for the families to stay there. So now it's kind of nice if the parents want to go, they can sleep, get rest, and then come back, because we don't like to have crabby parents and crabby kids. That's, <laughs> that's not a good combination. So, so if they want to, they have a place to go and kind of regroup and take a shower and, and feel refreshed so they're able to come back and take care of their child that they need to. We had a lot of kids from rural area. They may be the only one in their town that has a limb deficiency. So coming here and seeing, oh, there's eight other kids that have a limb deficiency. I'm not the only one. I think that's really helpful for them and to see, oh, well, if they can do that, maybe I can do that too. And, and it's one thing to have doctors and nurses and stuff telling you, well, you can do this and this will be good. But to see it, I think, from your own peers is really good. The kids that start coming when they're toddlers, they get to know the staff, they get to know the way the routines of every day go and they know um, they're excited to come back and see the same staff again and, and um, sometimes their favorite nurse or even if it's not their favorite nurse they know the faces they know the staff and they feel comfortable. I love being able to have somebody come in here and, and go out with something that is a tool in their life that, um, that helps them on a daily basis that they can um, appreciate only when they don't have it. They can, they can use it and it becomes a, um, a part of who they are getting around. I, I find it's just a a treasure that I get to come into a job like this and um, fall in love every week or so with, with a, another little kid. Um, it's, it's just remarkable that I get to do that. <laughs>